Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing News and I have the pleasure to announce, well, the first episode of the pre-fight preview show, International Boxing News pre-fight preview show, we'll, uh, we'll get the name solidified, but we're kicking off the first episode with the preview for the Nathan Heaney versus Brad Pauls 2, the Magnificent 7 show by Queen Frank Warren and Queensbury Promotions. I mean, if you think that the, this first show has come is because I'm starting something new after the Euro final at the week, and it has nothing to do with that because I never liked football anyway. So we're going into this into this sh show. Nathan Heaney versus Brad Pauls 2. I mean, British middleweight ties, the rematch. I mean, the first fight was an excellent scrap in my opinion. It was close and um, with with the fight ending in a split decision draw. First, it was a fight of two halves. I thought Nathan Heaney won the majority of the first half of the fight, Brad Paul's the second half of the fight, ending in that split decision draw. Important to note about that fight, Brad Paul's went into that fight kind of, he kind of put a few demons to bed that night. I mean, by his own admission, he's admitted that he underperformed against Tyler Denny. He didn't, um, he didn't box the way he normally boxed. He wasn't his, his normal aggressive self. Since that fight with Tyler, he picked up the English title against Mitchell Frearson and then rolled the dice against an on the high Nathan Heaney coming off a career best performance against Denzel Bentley in the November on the previous Magnificent Seven show. I mean, it, we're in for a really good fight this time around, in my opinion. I mean, both, both fighters really won it. Both fighters, Nathan thinks he won the fight clearly. He said, he said to me uh, in an interview at the launch press conference that he thought Brad Paul's only really won two rounds. Two, two rounds, clearly four rounds at a push. Brad Paul's essentially saying the same, close fight, but he thought he nicked it. Away fighter in Birmingham, close to Nathan Heaney's hometown of Stoke. I mean, Nathan Heaney's fans were bouncing that night. I mean, trying to drown them out. Brad Paul's brought a few people, but I mean, it's hard to outsell a massive ticket seller like Nathan Heaney, but I mean, both of those fighters will do everything they can to get their hands on that British title. I mean, Nathan Heaney, that this is the pinnacle of the sport for him, for him. He admitted that the only thing that he wants to do now is roll the dice against that world title fight um, at the Bet365 Stadium. I mean, which is really important thing to note. I think I don't I don't think this will happen, but Heaney can't be demotivated by this rematch with Brad Pauls. I mean. He's, ad he's admitted that the fight with Carlos Adames when he was WBC interim middleweight champion of the world um, was close to happening at the Bet365 Stadium prior to that draw with Brad Pauls, but the draw, it messed up the WBC rankings. The WBC, I don't think, would sanction him for that fight. And since then, Carlos Adames was an elevated to full world champion uh, prior to Jamel Charlo's kind of va vacating of that title. So, I mean, that, that opportunity might be might be a bit gone, so I don't know if that will demotivate De De Nathan Heaney. I don't, I don't think it will, but that can't, that can't happen to him if he wants to keep his Brit British middleweight title. If he does, we have not. It's not been unheard of for fighters to keep hold of their British title and then go on to that, um, go on, go on and fight for a world title. I mean. Look at Denzel Bentley, right? He defended against Marcus Morrison, went straight into the fight with Janabek when he was uh, just a WBO middleweight, which I'm middleweight champion. I mean, and arguably out of the Brits who have fought him, put in the best, put in the best performance. He lost, but did he make Janabek underperform? There is an argument for that. Very, very good fight, headlining the bill on uh, on Saturday night. Nathan Heaney versus Brad Pauls too. Put your predictions for that main event in the description. I mean, it's a close fight. If you had to perform, if you had to go on by wins and not losses, you probably go with Nathan Heaney. That win against Brad Pauls, uh, that win against um, Denzel Bentley. I mean, is is a win that ages ever better with Nathan, with Denzel picking up that win against Danny Dignam as well. But I mean, how badly does a loss to Tyler Denny go on, go on your record? I mean, the one of the most informed fighters in Britain Britain at the moment, if not the just defended his European middleweight title against Felix Cash. I think people are under underrating that win, but excellent fight uh, on Saturday night, headlining the Magnificent Seven show. The second fight I want to talk about is the return of the former undisputed super lightweight champion of the world, Chantal Cameron, who fights a former undisputed title challenger, Elhem Mekhaled. Great to see Chantal Cameron back. Uh, Wan Bam Sham El Capo is back. She wants to make her mark on the super lightweight division. I mean, I really respect her for staying, staying at 140. 
she wants to force an opportunity to reclaim her titles that she won and then defended against Katie Taylor the first time before losing the rematch in Ireland. She's got she's got a point to prove at super lightweight. She feels like she's still the, still the number one in the division despite that close close loss uh, to Katie Taylor. And the reason why I respect her staying at 140. Chantal could have easily moved up, moved up in weight and fought uh, Emma Cozin, who's WBO and WBC super welterweight champion, who Queensby have options on. No doubt that was definitely an option that was put to Chantal Cameron. Do you want to do you want to take this fight again against Emma Cozin that we think you'll win, gives you a chance to be in it, become a two weight two weight world champion, two weight unified champion. Then you can drop back down and then fight Katie Taylor on the on another. Queensby matching versus 5v5. Chantal said, no, force my position for at super lightweight. Get me the get me the chance to become mandatory challenger again. She's done, done that. Queensbury have delivered that to her, George and Frank. WBC interim super lightweight world title on the line. Forces that mandatory position on Katie Taylor after this fight with uh, Amanda Serrano in November. Maybe the, that Emma Cozin fight comes further down the line, but I think there's rumours of her fighting Cecilia Brokehouse. Um, but excellent opportunity for Chantal Cameron to, to solidify her mandatory position, once again at super lightweight and for Katie Taylor as well. Obviously, first fight of new trainer Grant Smith, massive fan of this link up. I mean, Grant Smith and Pierce Gudgeon down at the Steel City Gym. They breed champions in there, it's fair to say. Sonny Edwards, Dalton Smith, They've got uh, Nicola Vars in there, Janae Bostan, Nicola Bark, all these great, great fighters in there who, who are champions, obviously trained Charlie Edwards in the past. Thomas Asomba's got that European title as well. Florian Marku, they breed, they breed champions, they've been really good fighters and I think that Grant and Pierce will refine and perfect what is already a world-class fighter. Good fight as well, Ellen McLeod, she's not a mug. Proved to be a solid operator as well, tough as anything. Um, you might remember her, she fought for the undisputed, undisputed super featherweight world titles against Alicia Baumgartner. Baumgartner dropped her heavy in that fight. She still got up. She lost she lost the points decision. It was, it was a clear victory for um, Alicia Baumgartner, but she's tough as anything. And obviously coming up in those divisions, can't imagine it'll be an early night for Chantel Cameron, but I do predict we're gonna see, we're gonna see a classic Chantel Cameron performance. I think we're going to see a unanimous decision victory. She's going to force that posi that mandatory position on Katie Taylor and solidify herself as once again one of the best super lightweights on the planet. If she hasn't already, by by her accolades, for coming undisputed previously as well. Great to see Sh Chantel Cameron back. Hopefully, she's high up on the card. Hopefully, a lot of people are travelling down from Northampton to see her. But no, great, great, great to see Chantel Cameron back. And again, like I said, new trainer with Grant Smith and Pierce Gudgeon as well. First fight with Queensbury as well. We'll move on to the British and Commonwealth Bantamweight title fight between the champion Ashley Lane and the challenger Andrew Kane. I mean, if you haven't watched Andrew Kane before, where where have you been in the British boxing space? I mean, he's one of the most exciting fighters in the country, fighting one of I mean one of the one of British boxing success stories at the moment. I mentioned Tyler Denny, who's just kind of gone on this magnificent run at the moment. I mean, Ashley Lane, it seemed dead and gone his boxing career, right? It seemed like he he, he had no chance of coming back. I mean, he win, he, he knocks out Jordan Perkis away, down in Essex, I think he broke a lot of people in Essex's hearts that night. Win picked up the English title, and Queensbury gave him the opportunity to fight, I mean, as the opponent really, to fight Chris Bork at York Hall for the British title, for the British Bantamweight title. Over, overrun Chris Bork that night, he admitted that he was close to suicide, he was close, he was, he was at a low point, in his life, but he come back. He's now British and Commonwealth champion, and no, and no one will t will take that away from Ashley Lane. I mean, an, a phenomenal achievement. No one will take the achievement away from him. However, Andrew Kane is the favourite for me in 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 this fight. I mean, freakish punch power for a bantamweight, and he's one of the few fighters. I mean, to arguably get the better of Iron Baluta in their fight. Y yes, he lost. The fight on a on a by a close decision, split decision, I think it was. But he's the only real fighter in in recent times to really, outside of probably Liam Davies, really to dominate, drop, line up Baluta. And but for all intents and purposes, I mean, he went into that fight with a major hand injury, which kept him out after that fight for over a year. Um, 
and since then he's come back, knocked out, knocked out a pretty solid journeyman who not many people have, have stopped. He, he seems to put those injury worries behind him. I mean, and I mean he's he's down there at the Everton Red Triangle. Paul Stevenson and the team. I mean, on a massive high at the moment. Obviously Nick Ball picking up the WBA featherweight world title. So, I mean, you've got Peter and Joe McGrail continuing their continuing with their ascent. I mean, Brad Strand. I mean, I know he lost to Dennis McCann, but didn't disgrace himself in that fight at all. I think he just should think Dennis McCann just proved how good he is. And then you've got Bomber Brown, who I don't know if you've seen Bomber, Bomber Brown stand next to the other fighters in the gym. It's a, it's a bit of a hilarious sight, but they're all on a roll at the moment. I think Andrew Kane is Andrew Kane is the, is by far the favourite, but you can't write off um, Ashley Lano, who, as I said, is coming off a career best performance and a major upset picking up those titles. He's going to be up for it. I think his style might play into Andrew Kane's hands. If he's going to be naturally the aggressor, but Lane will be held. Lane will be, Lane will be hell bent on keeping his titles on Saturday night. But I think Andrew Kane might be might prove to be a bit too much, a bit too heavy handed for for the experienced fighter in Ashley Lane. Who I mean, I don't think he's ever turned down a fight. You look at his record; I think he's got eight losses, but those losses have come against relatively good opposition as well, and and in title fights. So I mean, Andrew Kane with a victory for me. But Ashley Lane will try and make it as, as difficult and he'll come to win as well. But Andrew Kane, mid to late stoppage, I wanna go, I wanna go for that fight, and I think we will see a new British and Commonwealth champion on Saturday night. The next fight I want to talk about Owen Cooper versus Echo Esman. I'm WBO European World Title title on the line. I think Owen Cooper's vacated that title. I think we're gonna see Sean uh, the English welterweight title. I think we're gonna see Sean Noakes and then the Bassey clash for that on the July 20, 27th show at the O2, Joe Joyce versus Derek Chisora. But this fight between Owen Cooper and Echo Esman, I mean it could be either excellent matchmaking or a massive gamble by Team Cooper. Owen Cooper himself coming off career best performance for the English title and that that WBO European against Ethan James. Um I walked out into the arena after doing some interviews. That fight had just started and uh, someone turned to me. I asked them how the fight was going and they said that Owen Cooper was making Ethan James look like he'd never boxed before. I mean, it was a, really was a career best performance from Owen Cooper, eventually stopping Ethan James as well. Owen Cooper and his team might have think they're catching Echo Esterman at the right time. Coming off that loss to Harry Scarf, he's no longer a spring chicken. He's, he's an experienced fighter. And I feel, I feel like they want to build on that momentum that they've gained from that win against Ethan James. On the other hand, Echo Esam and his team, I think they might be licking their lips at this fight. I think they'll think that Cooper has never fought anyone in Echo's level or anyone who Echo's fought. I mean, which they'll have a, have a point. I mean, Chris, Con Chris Congo, arguably a better fighter than Ethan James. Uh, I mean, Chris Jenkins at the time. He's really coming off some great wins as well. Well, great, uh, great wins and some great momentum. I mean, he's the engine for a reason, right? And I don't think you can take too much, take taking too much into that fight with Harry Scarf. Um, Echo is the slight favourite for me um, through his experience and that and that engine that can just overpower fighters. They they sometimes they don't really know what to do with it. If you have to keep Echo Esmond at bay and away from you. From the first bell, otherwise he'd be coming and coming and coming. And that's why Harry Scarf had so much success. He managed to kind of nullify that pressure from Echo Esman. However, can Owen Cooper do that with the limited experience that he has? I mean, they'll, they'll think that they can, but I mean, we're going to see if we if we do, we see some performance from Owen Cooper on on Saturday night. But I do think Echo Esman is the favourite, um, just because of that experience and and that relentless pressure that Echo Esman has. I mean, yeah, it's up in the air. Will Cooper have a, another career best performance or will Echo Esmond prove that he has a lot a lot left and that engine will be too much? I mean, but either way, we're in for a great, great domestic fight for that WBO European welterweight title. Sad that that English title is on the line. It, it's, a, it's a fight that's probably a bit of level level or two above that, but a win for both of them definitely enforces their mandatory position on that British title as well. So that's a great, great fight. Looking forward to that one. Um, and it might be quite early, so you won't be tired for that one. It'd be great. Uh, the next few fights on the card, uh, Solomon Dacus versus Michael Webster 2, English heavyweight title. Obviously, Solomon Dacus is originally scheduled to fight David Adelaide for that fight. David Adelaide has to, uh, was forced to withdraw. But obviously, Solomon Dacus versus Michael Webster is a rematch. Uh, rematch from the 
Soul's Queensby debut and the first Magnificent Seven that was on the back end of last year. I mean, Davis is going to want to prove that he has a lot more to offer Queensbury from that first fight. Doesn't I don't think he boxed the best of his ability. I think he he probably knows that as well. Michael Webster came to win. It was a close, close fight. He got the decision on his Queensbury debut, but he'll want to make it a bit more of an effective effective victory this time and, a, and, a, and an impactful victory and kind of prove to Queensbury that's why they signed him. But, that's that's what Sol's going to want to prove. He's going to want to take it back to that win against Rob Ishmael, where he, where he, where Rob Ishmael came in to win and and stopped him inside two or three rounds. I think it was back in Newcastle as well. So, I think Sol's going to Sol's going to want to deliver that. And I feel like I feel like Michael Webster will bring it again. But it's an, it's a, it's a, it's the rematch that no one expected. But it's the rematch that we're getting, and hopefully the. Soul can Soul can win that fight, and then we can see that fight with David Adelaide because I feel like it was, I feel like it's a really interesting fight where you've got the kind of the natural boxer versus the natural aggressor and the, and the power puncher as well. I don't think it's, I don't think anyone uh, anyone would be anyone would be annoyed if I said that David Adelaide probably punches a bit harder than Solomon Dakis, but Solomon Dakis is by far the probably the superior superior boxer out of the two. It's a really intriguing fight. Hopefully we see that rescheduled. If Solomon Dakis can get the win on Saturday night, which I do think he will, I think he'll have a point to prove, and I think he'll, uh, I think he'll get get the decision once once again. Um, a win obviously puts him in that domestic mix with kind of the likes of Moses Atalma, Johnny Fisher, Fabio Wardy, Fraser Clark. I do think if Solomon Dakis beats Michael Webster, he'll be calling for that British title fight, regardless of that David Adelaide fight. Even though everyone would like to see it, but David Adelaide has pulled out on him a few times through. Uh, reasons reasons by his own admission but I do think he'll be calling for that British title but if, whether it's the British title fight or the David Adelaide, uh, David Adelaide fight I think that'll be that'll be the best options for Solomon Dakers with a win on Saturday night Shabazz Massoud returns obviously set to fight Liam Davies as the headline for this show for the IBO Super Bantamweight World title um, I, I really hope that fight with Davies is going to be rescheduled. I think I think it is for later on in the year after Davies picked up a medical issue. I think two weeks ago, uh, he fights Marvin Solano over eight, and I think Shabazz will want to want a point to prove. Wasn't great in Newcastle. I was there ringside that night. Got the decision, defended his WBA ranking title, but he's going to want to stop Marvin Sol Marvin Solano early and get that fight with Liam Davies rescheduled uh, as quick as possible. But when Shabazz Masood is on it. I I'm, remind everyone, go and watch that fight with Jack Bateson. Jack Bateson was was arguably the favourite in that fight. It was a proper, proper 50-50. And he made it made it a fairly easy night's first stopping Jack um, a couple of years ago now. But that's probably Shabazz Masood. If you want to see the best Shabazz Masood, you watch that fight against Jack Bateson. He was, he was absolutely superb that night in Sheffield. Ezra Taylor returns. Uh, I mean, Queensbury... Queensbury want to kind of make their mark on that light heavyweight division again obviously they don't have Anthony Yard while well, they do and they don't there's a whole whole issue promotional issue going on with that at the moment but they've got another young light heavyweight prospect on the rise who wants to enter that mix I mean Queensbury are backing him his trainer Angel Fernandez is backing him and he's got he's got another title fight he's climbing those levels he fights Carlos Alberto Lamella for the WBA WBC sorry international title uh, Carlos Lamella is the European silver top European silver light heavyweight champion I don't think that title is on the line for this fight but this this a win on Saturday night should boost Ezra Taylor up in, in those rankings I mean he's on the rise at the moment he's getting some good stop stoppages as well he's getting a highlight where he's making a real name for himself I think a win on Saturday night could push him up to that English title fight, uh, up the up the rankings. I think Angel Fernandez told me on the uh, Bloomsmith React Poor Two Fight Week, he's the best like, light heavyweight in the division. I mean, that's some that's some praise considering the mix that we have at light heavyweight at the moment with the likes of Ben Whitaker, Dan Aziz, Joshua Boatsi, Willie Hutchinson, Craig Richards, Lyndon Arthur as well. A win against Ezra Taylor, um, a win for Ezra Taylor on Saturday pushes him pushes him to that next level and then maybe one more and then he, we might see him in the mix with a I don't know a Dan Aziz a Craig Richards I think those uh, those are really interesting fights I think you could do a round robin with all those guys so really really excited to see Ezra Taylor back back on Saturday night and then the final fight that I want to discuss I mean Zach Parker returns 
on his second consecutive Magnificent Seven in, in the Birmingham Resorts World Arena against the experienced veteran Jack Arnfield. I mean, if he wants any chance of reaching back to that WBO interim world title level that he lost the that he lost to John Ryder, obviously John Ryder winning that mandatory position for Canelo at the time. I mean, if he wants to get back to that level, he's going to have to put a really serious statement on against Jack Armfield. Jack, Ar Jack Armfield's fought at a really good level, but quite a while ago now. I know he's making making a comeback. He's had a few good wins recently, but. Zach Parker needs to win this fight and he needs to win it early in a statement statement performance. So he can't he can't get rocked and win a points decision like he did against Tyrone Zoiga um, back in March on the Heaney Pools one undercard. He can't do that. He needs to make a serious statement. And will we get it? I, d I don't I don't know. I don't like we haven't seen the best Zach Parker since probably that fight against Rohan Murdoch where he solidified that WBO number one uh, status ahead of his fight with um, John Ryder. I know he was scheduled to fight Demetrius Andre in between those times that fight got pulled. Um, but yeah, Zach Parker needs a statement, statement performance on Saturday night and I, I hope we see it because he could really, he could really make, a, make a dent in that super middleweight division. He's a very, very talented fighter but we just need a statement performance in for Queensbury to back him even more and I know BCB have his back, Neil Marsh has his back. So Zach Parker returns on Saturday night as well. That is the final fight that we're going to discuss from the for the Nathan Heaney Brad Pauls two magnificent seven. Um, I will think of a better name for this than the preview show. We can't call it that. Boxing News has that shout out Rob, Barry, and Andy as well. But let me know what you think of the first episode of the uh, International Boxing News preview fight card preview fight show. We'll think of a name. But yeah, let me know what your what your predictions are for the fight card below and. Uh, what would you like to see on this channel? This is a new form of content for us, moving away from just the interviews. I want to add different bits. But yeah, if you if you like this content, let me know. If you don't like it, you can leave it in the channel. I know there are some people who will do that as well. But yeah, I'm Regan Slaymaker for International Boxing Moves. And yeah, don't go change it.